Alrighty, Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bakah. This is Maury Medad Yahoo. Want to welcome you to another live broadcast of My Living Branch. And we allow a few minutes for those that are in the process of logging on to the stream to get onto the stream. But in the meantime, if you can hear me fine, please let me know that you can hear me okay in the chat. And we're going to have the ultimate test today of this new mic because they are cutting grass outside. And you can hear the, well, I can hear the blower. It's, uh, it's I know the other mic would definitely pick it up, but this one should have minimal background noise. So we shall definitely find out the day. Everything is tested. So I trust you've been having a good week and that all is well, that you are allowing the Father to give direction and instruction and you are following the direction and instructions that he's given you. We're ever so thankful for this journey. And we can see as time moves forward, the ever-changing climate in our world, how things are seem to be moving at a rapid pace. And it's it's very interesting. It's like things were put into motion even faster than expected. So we are definitely thankful. Um, we're going to be continuing our series today on feast days. And basically, we're trying... We're doing these lessons to help us to get the most out of our feast days because we want to make sure that we are giving him our best during the feast days. And one of the things you will notice, you know, when you when you start going through the feast days that you see in Scripture, you know, there were some trouble spots. And there were some things that tend to continue to rise up. So we want to help our mispakah, help our family, help to ensure that you don't fall victim to some of the same pitfalls that Israel did. And as we get into the lesson, you'll, you'll begin to see that if we're not careful, it's real easy to fall victim. But we don't want to claim the victim mentality. That's what a lot of people do. They want to blame everybody else for why they're facing what they're facing instead of we already did a lesson on that ownership. All righty, so we're going to go ahead and a few minutes after, we say Shabbat Shalom to all of our Mispakah that are logged on to the live stream. We appreciate you coming over. We're, we're glad that you're here. And we're looking forward to a revealing and exciting lesson that's going to fortify us and cause us to be strengthened. So let's pray. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohim Malak HaAlam. Father, we say, Toda Rabbah, for all of your goodness. Father, allow your word to surround us. And then after you have surrounded us with your word, let your word penetrate deep into, a, into our being. Father, that we will keep your word. We will be unchanging. We will be persuaded in all areas that you're in control and you know what's best for us and that you will bring us out better 
then we went in. We say Todaba by Father for all of those that will join us in this live stream. I pray, Father, for those that are seeking, and those that are searching, Father, that you will supply their answer based on them searching and seeking. Because we know, Father, that we can't expect for you to do everything and we not do our part. So, Father, help us to see our part so that we can navigate and make sure that we are doing as we're supposed to instead of just creating demands for you to do, that we will do our part and we know that if we live righteously and if we seek you with our whole heart, that you've already made a promise of what you would do. And we know that you're not select concerning your promises, but you're well able to deliver. Now, as we go into the lesson, we say, Toda Rabbah, for all of your goodness and what you shall reveal in the name of Mashiach Yahusha. Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. So, I'm calling this lesson Golden Calf Moment. And I don't want you to just think of golden calf. I want you to think of image because it can, your golden calf could come in any type of image and you have to be ready for it when it, when it arrives because it always arrives at a, a convenient time for it to be able to grow in your life. So we're going to read, and I want you to pay special attention to what I've highlighted in red, bold, and also underlined, so that you don't miss it. Because if you miss this, then you miss the whole lesson, because it's not just about the golden calf. There were other things that there were things that led up to this event and what made them susceptible to this event. Okay, Exodus chapter 32, verse 1. And when the people saw that Moshe was so long in coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aharon and said to him, Arise, make us mighty ones who go before us. For this Moshe, the man who brought us up out of the land of Mitraim, Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Now, Yes, he was the man that represented the one that brought them out. So, who brought him out? Okay. The father brought him out. He used Moshe as an instrument. But it was by his mighty hand. Okay, let's keep reading. And Aharon said to them, take off the golden earrings, which are in your ears of your wife, your sons and your daughters, and bring them to me. And all the people took off the golden earrings, which were in their ears. Very interesting. What was targeted, what they brought, it was what was in their ears. Did they wear gold anywhere else? Possibly. But we know that this particular text tells us that what was brought was in their ears. Okay, you're going to get a picture here as we and when we start to go back to the events leading up to this. And brought them to Aharon. And he took this from their hand. And he formed it with a engraving tool and made a molten calf. And they said, 
This is your mighty one, O Israel, that brought you up out of the land of Mitraim. And Aharon saw and built a slaughter place before it. And Aharon called out and said, tomorrow is a festival to Yahuwah. Okay, so that's the event. We see that. That's well and good. We can see that plain. We know they messed up. But see, here is what we got to glean from this. When we mess up, we've got to backtrack and trace down where the mess up came. See, many of us, when things happen, all we want to do is, you know, get forgiveness and move on. But we need to trace this thing back down. If there was a fire, where did the fire start? What room was it in? What was the source of the fire? Was it electric? Did it start electrically? Was it um, another chemical? Did somebody put down gas and throw a match? You know, how did this thing start? What caused it? And then we come forward and we can see, okay, this I knew about this electrical problem a long time ago, but I just, you know, didn't feel that it was important. And I didn't want to shell out the money to fix it. So I just ignored it thinking that it would be okay until your house burned down. Whereas something that could have cost you 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks to get fixed, you ignored it. Now it's created a destruction that destroys your whole house. Your house could be worth uh, two, three hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, 300,000, 500,000, a million, whatever the cost. But we more concerned about forgiveness in which you should be concerned about forgiveness and being in right standing. But we want to know where did this come from? How did we arrive at this golden calf moment and become so susceptible to having an image that and and we knew better. This this is the whole point. What did we neglect? What did we overlook? What did we put to the side? And this is why some of us still have wonder why we in a cycle. The house keep burning down <laughs> because we haven't traced down. What is causing it? You have to fix the root cause of it in order for it to stop occurring. And we're not talking about patchwork. I'm talking about fixing. Fixing on a permanent basis. Okay, so let's keep moving. Pay close attention now what I told you what I got underlined. And they rose early on the next day, offered ascending offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, go, get down for your people whom you brought out of the land of Mitzrayim have corrupted themselves. Okay, he wants, he's like, okay, I, I'm, I'm not when it comes to corruption and sin, I'm separate. I, 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 I separate myself from that. And notice what he said. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I have commanded them. So when did they get some commandments? 
huh, interesting. So he gave them something that should have sustained them and kept them. But there was some neglect there. Let's keep going. And they have made themselves a molding image and have bowed themselves to it and slaughtered to it and said, this is your mighty ones, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Mizraim. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, I have seen this people and see it is a stiff necked people. Okay, so we, we've got to start doing some investigation. Okay, what was in you came out in your actions. Okay, notice what we just read. They asked for the wrong thing. They wanted something other than Yahuwah. Now, you, you might think, oh, I'm not going to ask for anything other than Yahuwah. But you might do it in a subtle way. What do I mean? You might ask for a solution other than Yahuwah. So in other words, when his word doesn't, when he gives you specifics on how to handle something, but you don't want to handle it that way, then you're asking for the wrong thing. You want a solution other than him. So in that fashion, you're really creating another image. See, the only thing that should be there is his answer, his solution, his way. And when you start to create other solutions, other ways. Okay, and, and it could be as simple as. You know what it says that you need to do, but you go to every brother and sister searching for an answer that's going to match with what you want to do. And then when you find it, then you claim that, oh, Yahuwah just gave me confirmation. No, he didn't give you confirmation. He gave you his word to tell you how to handle it, but you didn't want to handle it according to his word. So you went searching for another answer image golden calf moment okay your offering your offerings were for the wrong purpose notice the words i want you to hold on to these words ate drink rose rose up to play the final stage is corruption you turned aside quickly Bowed to the wrong image and slaughtered to the wrong and, and slaughtered to that image. It's, it can happen so easily. And people not even realize it. Okay, this is the feast days. Now, pre and and, and I'm trying not to make this lesson too long because it it was getting ready to get real long. So I'm giving you this so you can go back and read what they received before their go before their golden calf moment. They were well equipped to handle what was going on if they had used what they were given. The point is Sometimes people don't want to use what they are given because they want another solution. And don't don't worry, Abi Yahoo, huh? I'm, I'm, I'm walking this one down because somebody has to see what's going on and why. They're in a cycle of defeat, a cycle of thought, a cycle of action that's not conforming to his word. Okay, when you go over to 
they 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 um they had praise and worship and which praise and worship is the fruits of your lips is an offering okay look at exodus 15 you find the song of moses okay now look at this remember we talked about the word eight exodus 16 Bread of heaven. They were given manna. Isn't that something? And when I said manna, I don't know what that was. I heard some go. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Witness. Then notice Exodus 17. Water from a rock. They drank. They had something to drink. Well, it was showing them a picture of what he was giving them. Something for them to hold on to. Something for them to fall back on as a witness to his greatness. They even got victory in there, victory over the Amalekites, Exodus 17. That was the first battle. Now, here comes a, a little problem. I can't say is the source of what happened, but Yethro's solution is not Yahuwah's solution for help. In Exodus 18. Because notice every place we find. When it talks about you listening to another voice. Sometimes people search for voices. Because they want solutions. But that. Does not mean it's Yahuwah's solution. A good suggestion does not mean it's his solution. I take it as just that. It's a suggestion. I need him to confirm your suggestion. Just like when, when uh, Sarah told Abraham, look, Hagar's got to go. She can't be heirs with my son. Did not the confirmation come when Yahuwah told Abraham, you know, listen to the voice of your wife? Confirmation come, bam, he, he was able to execute and, and do it with confidence because he got confirmation from the father. He didn't just go on what she said and what she wanted, but he got confirmation from the father. So we don't see anywhere in that text in Exodus 18 where Yahuwah confirmed this at all, but we'll read it. Exodus 18, 24, and Moshe, and Moshe listened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he said. And Moshe chose able men out of all of Israel and made them head over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Look, I've been doing um, ministry for a large, the largest portion of, of my life and I can tell you that everyone that comes up in the ranks I don't care whether it's in Hebrew amongst Hebrews or Christians or Muslims or whatever not everyone has that calling to occupy that zone and you can tell it They have other agendas in mind. Or sometimes it happens out of, you know, hey, my father was this. So I got to follow in his footsteps. But you can clearly tell that whatever the father had, the son definitely doesn't have. Or it could, it could be out of necessity. Necessity. 
So let's keep going. The people witnessed Yahuwah's esteem. That was in Exodus 19, worship. And notice what he says in the fifth verse. And now if you diligently obey my voice and shall guard my covenant, then you shall be my treasured possession above all the people. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a reign of priests, a set-apart nation. These are the words which you are to speak to the children of Israel. And in the 25th verse, Moses, Moshe went down to the people and spoke to them. Okay, but this this is all all pre golden calf. Now, I want you to look instruction to sustain during times ahead. They already had notice. One thing I noticed. In, in the receiving of these instructions. Offerings and all the list is designed to draw us close to him. But you don't see them drawing closer. You see them moving further away. Okay. Just because somebody can quote his word doesn't mean that they're drawing close. People can memorize a whole bunch of stuff. People talk good game in this Hebrew walk. But let's see where the action takes us. So let's look in the 18th verse of the 20th chapter. Now all the people saw the thunder and the lightning flashes, the voice of the shofar and the mountain smoke. Now they saw this. They witnessed all this. Now we don't, we, we weren't there. We just reading about it. They saw all this and they still had a golden calf moment. Hmm. And the people saw it. They trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moshe, you speak with us and we hear, but let not Elohim speak with us lest we die. And Moses said to the people, do not fear for Elohim has come to prove you and in order and in order that his fear be before you so that you do not fear. I mean, do not sin. So the people stood at a distance, but Moshe drew near the thick darkness where Elohim was. So I, I want you to take note in your learning, your learning is for you to draw closer, draw me near. There's an old song, and, and we had a, if we had an open mic, I, I have Maury Yesharon singing, Draw Me Nearer. <laughs> yes. Because that, that's, that's really what we need to do is be closer. But you can't be closer in any type state. you got to be set apart. Set apart in every facet, all of your ways. Now, I want you to I want you to see what they learned, so that I could. And the reason I want you to see that because he equipped them to get past their golden calf moment if they used what he gave them before the test came. Okay, they learn the law of the altar. Look in Exodus 20, verse 22. 
And Yahuwah said to Moshe, Say this to the children of Israel. You yourselves have seen that have spoken to you from the heavens. You do not make besides me mighty ones of silver, and you do not make mighty ones of gold for yourself. So they had that. They knew that. They were given that. It was spoken to them. Now, what they did with it after they heard it, that's a whole different story. And this is what we're running into. We're teaching. We're giving to people. The mores are, you know, trying to instill the word of Elohim. You're even going back reading. But what are you doing with it after you read it? Where is it going? They learned the law of Shabbat and festivals. Okay, you, I'm not going to read that whole chapter. Exodus 23, you'll see he lays out for them. And notice, when we read in Exodus 34, what did Aharon say? It's a festival to Yahuwah. Hmm. Interesting. But he had already given them the law of Shabbat and festivals to help sustain them for what was coming. Okay, so what went wrong? Many, many people do great. You know, um, well, I'm going to talk about that here in a second. And to Moshe, he said, come up to Yahuwah. You and Aharon and, and Nadab and Abihu and the 70 elders of the people, and you shall bow yourself from a distance, but Moshe, Moshe shall draw near to Yahuwah by himself and let them not draw near nor let the people go up with him. And Moshe came and relayed to the people all, listen to this, all he related to who? The people. All the words of Yahuwah, all the right rulings. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which Yahuwah has spoken we shall do. So he gave them that word. Okay. And there was some other stuff we're going to mention along the way. I, I'm, I'm trying to get you to see how well equipped they were to deal with that golden calf moment. And for many of us, you are equipped. You have the resources to sustain against a golden calf moment. But resources mean nothing if you don't use them. Look at verse 12. And Yahuwah said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and be there. While I give you tablets of stone and the Torah and the commands which I have written to teach them. So they had what they needed to sustain until <clears throat> he brought the, the tablets down that were going to be written by the hand of Elohim to teach them. Look at verse 18. Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain. And it came to be that Moshe was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Herein is where things start to take a turn.
Let's go back to verse 32. I mean, chapter 32, verse 1. And when the people saw that Moshe was so long or delayed, the word there in Hebrew is bush, to pale, by implications to be ashamed, to be disappointed or delayed. It's, it's a, the way it's used here is used as an idiom to mean delay or con, uh, concession. So he was delayed. He was up there 40 days and 40 nights. And delay, time, <clears throat> time can be the thing that destroys us. As long as he was there with them, he was able to push them through. Hold their hand. But see, there comes a point in your walk that when you've been given something, we got to, it's going to be tested to see where you are. There's going to be a delay there, a pause if you will, to see if you absorbed what he gave to sustain you against that moment. You don't know what that moment could be, but you know it's an image. It's something that's trying to prop itself up in your life. It's something that's trying to exalt itself in your life above Elohim. It could be a broken home. It could be hatred. It could be your children. Could be an ex, could be a current spouse. Could be your temper, could be anger. But it's an image that's trying to prop itself up above what Elohim has given you and told you how to sustain in this hour. Can you see something? For some, it could be laziness. For some, it could be I've always wanted to be this. But instead of waiting to see if he calls you, you just do it yourself. So many circumstances I could go over that could fit into this. And notice what they go on. That Moses and this now notice what, what got them when the people saw. It was something visual. So it wasn't lust, but it worked through the vision of what they saw, how they viewed the circumstance. They could have viewed it so much different. Elohim, I mean, he must really love us. Look at the time that he's taking to give Moshe the stuff for us. So that we can be a righteous nation. But they were so easily drawn away from what he, the principles he left them with. It's a golden calf moment. The people gathered together to Aharon and said to him, Arise, make us mighty ones who go before us. For this Moshe, this man that put his blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> into bringing them out of Mitzrayim using the hand of, you know, being the hand of the spokesperson, the prophet. Or because really when he brought them out, he was made an Elohim to the Mitzrayim, to the Mitzrayites, and Aharon was a prophet. 
And look what they did. For this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Mitzrayim, we do not know what has become of him. So let's look at this process. We went through all the chapters, chapter 15, 16, 17, 19. We, we, we talked about all the things that they were given to sustain them, that word. They saw his esteem. They saw his wonders. Then he, he gave them what he needed them to do. And when we read here, Moses, uh, look at verse 24 down here. I mean, chapter 24, verse 3. Moses came and told the people all the words of Yahuwah and all the rules. And the people answered with one voice and said, all the words that Yahuwah has spoken, we will do. And Moses, now listen to this. And verse 4, and Moshe wrote down all the words of Yahuwah. So listen to this. He rose up early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain, 12 pillars, according to the 12 tribes of Israel. So they had not only something to see, they had something that they heard and they can go back and rehearse it. Just in case something was unclear. But what I'm trying to tell you, the test is coming. The test is here. Some of us are in the middle of the test. Some of us are drawing to the end of a test. Some of us are getting ready to start a test. Notice what threw them off at the test. One simple thing. The people saw that Moshe delayed. When it doesn't happen in your timing. You want it to happen tomorrow. You want everything to come to fruition. Boom, 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 boom. Yes, it could happen like that. But if it doesn't, he already has given you what you need to sustain through the tests. So this test it's going to test your heart. Where did that word end up? Did it make it all the way to your heart? Or did it just stop at the outer edges of your ears and eyes? Did it penetrate? And this right here, just in case you don't know. Talking about your mind. Did it make it to the recesses of your mind? Or did it just stop on the surface? Did it penetrate? Well, this test is going to tell us where it made it. Because the test is like a a bridge. If If it didn't make it, you're going to get disobedience. If it made it, you're going to get obedience. So here's the factor. That I see. And I'm not saying it's the only factor. But what they did with what they were given played a crucial role. And that's in Psalms 119 verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It has this word has to go beyond just surface level. 
And you'll find so many people are walking surface. That's all they got. They're in the shallows, surface. But when the test comes and all the surface stuff is blown away, there's nothing in the deep recesses of their mind to keep them because they didn't store anything there. See, what you're going to learn is that your mind is a storage place. What kind of treasure are you putting there? What are you holding there? Well, they're held in an image. So when all the surface stuff was blown away, all that word they were given, he even built 12 pillars and built an altar and wrote it down, did all these things. But they didn't write it on their hearts. They didn't put it in their minds. It wasn't engraved in their minds to, to keep and do what was spoken. But what was in there was another image. What was in there? Okay, he's delaying. There's another solution. I don't, I don't have to do Yahuwah's solution. There's another solution. And my solution is make me like what I came out of instead of make me like him. See, many are talking about they want to be more like him. But when you're tested, your words are more like the world. Your actions are more like the world. You know, how you respond is more like the world. That's the image that's propped up in you. Because if you had his word hid in your heart and you're tested, what it's going to do is going to bring out him in you. In that situation, you're going to be more like him. You're going to respond according to what he's spoken. You're going to exhibit his actions. And guess what it's going to cause you? It's going to cause you not to sin. Because you're using his solution. It's a treasure. It's a treasure, but it's got to get in you. And, and I'm not talking about an intellectual. See, and this is the thing. Some study intellectually. Okay, they can rehearse back what it says. But when it comes to doing application, that's where the rubber meets the road. Because I can tell you a solution, but can I walk you through a solution in life, real life, and do it with confidence? To treasure up, to hide, L look at it. Sapain, Safane, Safan, excuse me. That's the prime root to hide, to hoard, to reserve. And you often see it as hide or treasure, or store up, a secret place. See, when you treasure something, you it's not out for everyone to abuse. When you treasure something, if you have a, a car that you, we just use a car. If you have a car that you treasure, I mean, you really treasure this car. 
You got it in the garage. You got a cover on it. You keep that car polished. You keep the wheels on the wrong. You keep it running in good condition. You make sure the engine is spotless. You know, you do the maintenance that's supposed to be done on it. You treasure it. It's not on the street parked by everything else where people can come along, den it up. You treat it with care. It's your baby. This is what this word's got to be. Got to cherish it. So, you know, just, you know, um, it means to conceal something with a definite purpose, either for protection, but you can also conceal stuff for sinister reasons. Moshe was hid in the house for three months to protect him from the Pharaoh's death decree against all Hebrew males. That's in Exodus two and two. So we think in treasure. And I want you to see how important it is. See, the word of Elohim is not an alternate. It is your one and only solution. You can't treat it like an alternate. Come to it when you need it. No, it has to be the driving force of your life. Can you look in, in, in um, Deuteronomy 6, verse 6? And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. Or 11, verse 18. You should therefore lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand. And they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. We read that every week. But I I come to tell you, it's one thing to read it and to rehearse it back in memory. It's a whole different ball game when it comes to putting it in action. Deuteronomy 30, 14, but the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. Why is it there? So that you can do it. See, uh, you know, I'm here to help. Proverbs 2, verse 1, my son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commands with you. It has to be something you cherish. That you follow. That you're sincere about. That it's your solution. It's your go-to. It's your only way to go. You don't need any alternatives or anything that deviates from it. That's it. That's the word. That's all I need to hear. Give me the word. And it's such a treasure that when this treasure starts out as a seed, The enemy is trying his best to snatch it up. And we often read this in Luke 8, verse 12. The one along the path are those who who have heard. Then the devil comes, takes away the word which uh, the word from their heart so that they may not believe. And be saved. So. I wanted to show you that Mashiach talked about delay. 
And delay is going to become a huge factor. Because we live in a time when no one knows the day or the hour. We don't know what's going to happen. We know what the end result is going to be. And if we're not careful, that golden calf, that image is going to pop up. Where we're going to have every solution but the right solution. Matthew 24, verse 48. But if that evil servant say in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begin to beat his fellow servants to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant shall come on a day when he does not expect it at an hour he does not know and shall cut him in two and appoint his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I'm reminded, if you, if you remember, delay has been one of the testers to see what's in people. And we're going to see what's in a lot of folks during this last, these last days because it's going to be delay after delay. And I didn't put it in the lesson, but I'm reminded, remember, when King, uh, when Shaul and Samuel or Shemuel was given, uh, he told him to wait for him, Gilead. And he would come and make an offering and and then because he didn't come, he had been waiting, 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 King. Then then Shaul or Saul let the pressure of the people, according to what he said, and fear take hold of him. So he offered what he was not supposed to offer. And immediately after he'd done it, boom, what happened? Shemuel show up, the prophet Shemuel. So delay is a huge tester. And you're going to see the character during these times of delay come out in people's actions. Okay. It was also in the story, uh, the parable of the the ten virgins, Matthew twenty five and two. Five of them were wise, five foolish. Those who were foolish were uh, foolish, having taken their oil, their lamps took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their containers with their lamps. Now, when the bridegroom took time, when he delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard, see, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Delay is going to bring out and it's going to separate who's who. So keep in mind, this occurred talking about the golden calf, doing our feast day cycles. Prepare yourself so you can make the right decision at the appointed time. Where you put the word of Elohim and how you value the word will determine how effective it will be in your life. Decision time is coming. So we're just going to talk a little bit about your treasure. And we on good on time. Because you need to know that this is this is your treasure. You have to take ownership of it as your treasure, not the mores treasure, their excitement for the word. 
This has to be your excitement, your thrill, your go-to for the word of Elohim. Look at Matthew 6, 19. Do not lay up for yourself treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart shall be also. Then look at Matthew 12, 35. The good man brings forth what is good from the good treasures of his heart. The wicked man brings forth what is wicked from the wicked treasure. And I say to you that for every idle word men speak, they should give an account of it in the in the day of judgment. For by your words you shall be declared righteous, and by your words you shall be declared unrighteous. Remember that tongue is connected to your heart. To that mind. Thy word have I hid in my heart. It's a treasure that I might not sin against thee. Let his principles guide you. Let his Torah instruct you. Hold fast to his word. Let no one. Steer you away from it, not to the left, nor to the right. Don't add to it. Don't subtract from it. And make sure that you're walking in his righteousness and not in self-righteousness. Because these are his feast days. It's his order. And his purpose. And we have Shavuot coming up here soon. It's right on us. So we need to make sure we're in the right frame of mind. Make sure our hearts are where they need to be. Come on, let's pray. Father, I give you praise. that you've given us what we need to sustain us through our feast day cycles. I pray that your people will take heed to your word and that we will, in our approach to you, approach you with reverence that you're set apart, that we'll be set apart, that we will approach you not as that which is common, but we will approach you like what you are, set apart. And that your feast days will be honored and will bring esteem to your name because they're your days. Help us to have your purpose. Help us to have your order. And we give you praise, honor, and esteem. Continue to direct your people down that righteous path. Give them accountability for their actions. And continue to show them to be responsible in handling your word. We say Toda Rabbah for all that you do and we give you praise, honor, and esteem in the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah, Amin. All right, Ms. Bakai, if you have any questions, uh, you can always email me at info at mylivingbranch.org. So, you know, it's interesting. I can tell how the season it's definitely changing um, just the temperament of how people are shifting 
and going. Stay in tune. Stay prayerful. Watch and pray that you don't enter into temptation. Keep the Father at the forefront. Okay, and if you would like to be a part of our bookmarker witnesses team, you can do so. Just go to our website, www.bm.hebrewfoundation.org, and become a part of our bookmarker witnessing team. Hebrew Passover story, guess what? Passover be here before you know it. It's a cycle. It's coming back around. So, hey, we want to keep that in the forefront. You know, all these feast days. And let's keep in mind that the feast day, what is the character of that feast day we're celebrating? What is the the crop that we are offering? You know, what do you see in that crop? How does it grow? Are there are there uh, imitation crops? You know, what does it take to grow that crop? What does it take to harvest that crop? What does it take to make that crop usable? Keep all that in mind because that's the character of that particular feast day. And every feast day has different characteristics that it brings to the scene. And the more we're um, agriculturally hooked into and understand through scripture and through um, just knowing how agriculture works, the better able we'll better, the better able we'll uh, can carry out that feast day and the characteristics of that feast day. All right. If you would like to support, you can. You can join our website at Hebrew Found. Excuse me at um, MyLivingBranch.org. And if you would like to donate, you can do that. But most of all, we're asking that you would send your prayers up that we will continue to do the Father's work and to help those and speak into the lives of those He has appointed. And if you would like to donate, you can do so by Cash App. There's a online. Um, donation button in the stream and you can do so by paypal so that's all up to you main thing i ask hey send a prayer up for us and you can also join the website we have all kind of um good things over there the calendar and different other videos that are giving you the climate of what's going on in the world all right let's see Let's look back at our comments just to see if there was anything I might have missed. Nope, don't look like I missed anything. We say uh, appreciate all the mores um, being in the uh, stream. Appreciate all of you for joining us. It's indeed a pleasure to have you on the live stream. We'll be uploading this to YouTube and also to the Brighton Network. So, hey, make sure you prepare your hearts. June 3rd to be here before you know it. We want to have an exciting time. All right, Miss Bacar, this is Maureen Madad Yahoo saying unto you, Shabbat Shalom. Let's make this the best Shabbat ever. Shabbat Shalom, Miss Bacar.